All right, I promised you guys I would get into detail about these typekit fonts because there are a few things to know that you may not know already. For instance, there are some limitations to how you can use these typekit fonts. You can use them a limited amount. Uh, they are a benefit of your Creative Cloud membership, and your Creative Cloud membership is sort of uh, the most basic membership entitling you to use uh, these typekit fonts. So uh, the way this works, it, it's uh, there's an upside and kind of a downside. The, the upside is you, you get a ton of fonts for absolutely free with your Creative Cloud membership, even if your membership is only for use with Muse CC, meaning you could be paying as little as, uh, I believe it's $14.99 a month, and uh, get all of these fonts, which is really just incredible. Uh, the downside is you can only use these fonts for a limited number of uh, page views. So anytime someone loads up your web page, it loads up this font, and that's considered a page view. If they click to another page on your website, that is another page view. So uh, there are some limitations here, and I'm going to show you guys uh, one, where those limitations can be found, and two, uh, how to see where you stand with those limitations, and three, how to make sure that the WebKit fonts work with your site so you don't run into any trouble. Uh, so the first thing to know, and I'm also going to show you how to browse these and uh, how, to, how to find the font you're looking for more easily than just doing it here within Muse. So uh, at the most basic level, you've got your font list, and you can choose Add Web Fonts where you're presented with a little welcome dialog showing that you now have access to these Typekit web fonts. So if I choose Get Started, here they are, and there are a lot of them. It shows 1,061 within Muse. It shows a slightly different number on the Typekit website, so I'm not sure which number is the, the real accurate number. Uh, but you do have a combination between these Typekit web fonts, which are part of your Creative Cloud membership, and you also have these Edge web fonts, which you get whether or not you have that membership. These are totally free, 100% with or without a membership, which is nice. So let's go back over to Typekit and take a look at our browsing options here. Uh, there is a really important feature here in the top right called Filter. And if you click on Filter, there are different ways that you can display or not display these fonts. Uh, for instance, you can show fonts that are recommended for paragraph or body text uh, versus fonts that are recommended for headings or title text. Uh, there are fonts that are very nice and very cool and very readable for titles and headings, but are not so good for paragraph text. They lack readability at a small size. Um, Sizes, uh, I believe the average uh, heading uh, H1 text is 38, something like that. And the average uh, body text these days is uh, closer to 14, 14 to 16 pixels. Uh, so some fonts work better smaller, some work better larger. Uh, in fact, the majority of body fonts are serif fonts, and for those of you who aren't familiar with serif fonts, uh, they're fonts that have these little feet sticking out, almost like uh, a candle that's slightly melted at the bottom, and that creates a baseline that's easier to follow with the eye, which is why they're used more often than not uh, for body text, so it's easy for your eye to follow lines and lines and lines of text. Uh, so that's pretty cool that we can filter that way, and we also have these other filters for the type weight. If you only want very light fonts, you can filter by only light fonts or fonts that have a light version, uh, etc., etc. Uh, and then up here, these classifications are very useful. You can search for serif fonts only or sans serif fonts only. Those are fonts without those little serifs sticking out. Uh, there's also fixed width. There's also uh, slab serif, which have those thick blocky uh, serifs instead of those uh, sort of thin and elegant serifs. So a lot of filtering options here, and they're very, they're very, very useful. Really, really very useful. Um, so that's definitely something to use. But there's another way, there's a better way, there's an easier way uh, to find the best font for you, and that is using the Typekit website. It's very useful. So I'm going to open up Safari here, and I'm going to go to, here's the website, typekit.com, believe it or not, uh, followed by fonts. I'll hit return here, and typekit.com slash fonts is going to bring us to the page where we can browse all these fonts. Now here's my favorite part. Right now you see only a very small snippet of each font and you can't really, um, I mean you see the same filtering options. It's basically like the same thing as we were just looking at, right? Uh, so the first thing I want to do, I'm going to go into this list view. The next thing I want to do is I can type what it is that I want to say. So if I want to say Muse Resources, I can actually see Muse resources written out in each respective font, and I can also make the text bigger or smaller. So if this is for a small little title, I can make sure that this is nicely readable uh, at that small little title size. 
and uh, I can also sort by featured or newest or alphabetically by name. I could also do a search for a font if I know what font I'm looking for. And another really cool part is if I find something I like and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, I can just click on this little heart and it adds it to my favorites. So later I can go to my favorites and I can see those fonts, whether or not they show up in Muse or if someone asks me, hey, what was that font you used? Um, I can just hop on typekit.com from any computer in the world. I can see my fonts that I've favorited and it's really easy to remain uh, intact with my fonts, in, you know, in contact with my fonts, so I'm not losing track of things all the time. Because I don't know about you guys, if you guys have ever worked at a design agency where files are going around, um, you guys know that fonts can be an issue and that people say, hey, what's this font? Do you have this font? Do you have that font? Then you got group emails going out asking who has what font. So uh, this can make it easier for you to solve those situations. So that little heart's very helpful. But really, the best thing about this is I get to see what I want to write at the size I want to write it in the font that I might want to write it in. And I get to make that decision and know that it's the right decision before I continue. Now, here's another thing. I talked about these limitations earlier. And those limitations can be found under the account tab in the top right. So you'll want to be signed in. Uh, I'm signed in here. If you weren't signed in, it would say sign in here. And I'm going to go to account now that I'm signed in. And this is going to allow me to see where I stand in terms of these limitations. So synced fonts. Synced fonts do not have to do with Adobe Muse. That's the good news. Uh, web usage does have to do with Adobe Muse. It has everything to do with Adobe Muse. So these synced fonts have to do with other applications and your Creative Cloud membership. Uh, so for instance, when you want to use a font with Photoshop or you want to use a font with Illustrator, you've got to sync it through your Creative Cloud membership and it goes through the Creative Cloud app up here at the top and then you've got to deal with, you know, uh, having or not having the fonts that you need and getting rid of the ones that you don't need so you don't hit this limit. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. The ones that show up in Muse don't actually seem to affect this limit, which is really cool. We have to worry about this one, the monthly page view limit. So if you're doing, uh, let's say you're using your account to build a website for a client, and this client doesn't mention the fact that they're really, really popular, and you have no idea what kind of traffic to expect, but they get 250,000 page views a month. Uh, if that is the case, then you're quickly going to use up a lot of your account's uh, page view limit. So if you put this on a couple of client websites, boom, your account's already already toast. Um, so that's not <laughs> that's not necessarily a good thing. So be careful where you use these fonts and be careful how you affect this limit. And you can come log in and you can come look at this. So as far as websites go, you can use as many websites as you want as long as you don't go over this total limit. And fonts per website, also unlimited. So you can use that however you want. You can have as many fonts on as many websites as you want. So it's really cool. So it's relatively unlimited. But again, sites with a lot of traffic, uh, you can go over on this limit. Uh, more, more good news, because I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking, uh, oh, crap, I'm going to go over that limit. And when I do, all of my text is going to disappear or my client's text is going to disappear and I'm in big trouble. Uh, but in the Adobe documentation regarding these limits, uh, they say that if you go over the limit consistently, if you go over the limit, say, several months in a row, uh, they will email you suggesting that you upgrade plans and then action will be taken if you don't comply. So uh, the idea is uh, do a good job. If you do a bad job, uh, your stuff's not just going to disappear overnight, uh, but try to do a good job with staying uh, within this limit. One more technical thing with these Typekit fonts before, uh, before you guys run off and play with them. Uh, if your site is hosted at multiple URLs, multiple domain names, uh, and you publish to those multiple domain names, or let's say you have a vanity URL and some people visit from that URL, some people visit from another URL, uh, one might be a shorter URL, one might be a longer URL, it's, et cetera, et cetera. There's a new feature of Muse that is a technical thing, and it's when you go to publish this site, no matter how you go about publishing your site, uh, you are asked for the site URL in the publishing process. And the idea is now uh, for Typekit to work properly and for the site map of the site to be generated properly, uh, you must include all of the URLs where the site will be published and found. Uh, so if this site is www.museresources.com and let's say for instance I also had mr.com which I don't but that would be cool I would also hit that little plus sign or just do a comma and a space and do www.mr.com 
so you got to include all those URLs in there or else it will not work properly so make sure to do that and then when you publish your site all the fonts just work they link up automatically it does it over the internet uh, I'm sure lots of magic involved uh, and then you're good to go that's it so just start picking your fonts and having fun so remember typekit.com slash fonts it's gonna be easier to browse your fonts that way when you find something that works for you come back to muse do a search for that font and you are good to go so hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully you learned something that you didn't know otherwise and if you did please subscribe if you haven't already I have more stuff coming soon